So last episode we reached the max population of Zeds in the series and today our goal is to make this place a ghost town. I also want the fire station to become a safe haven with no worries about Zeds in the future. But let's cut the talking, welcome to episode 6. So as it was already nearly 5pm on day 61 there was no real reason to go out too far. I decided to rip all the clothes into ropes, empty the green van of all the loot from the last episode and start on the first tailoring book. This is one of the last skills we need the boost in XP from. And once midnight hit, I called it a night before day 62, where our preparations began. So as I mentioned in the intro, I want to get the bulk of Rosewood clear this episode so we can start to branch out to new areas. Before I do that, I have a few upgrades to the base I want to complete and that starts with level 7 carpentry. Today, we get started on that goal. I loaded up a couple of supplies into the van where I had dumped my ropes yesterday, gave myself a quick wash from the sink and headed out on the road. I stopped by the logs to drop off the ropes, then parked the van down the street to start collecting loot. I realised I'd already forgotten the carpentry supplies so after a quick quick trip back to the base we were ready to start work. I spent the majority of the day dismantling the fence around the first house we came to, reaching level 5 carpentry in the process. And by the end of the day we headed inside to get some rest, ready to go again on day 63. On day 63 we were back out finishing off the fence around the house. It was much of the same all day really, moving house to house dismantling as much furniture as possible. I actually find this quite satisfying strangely. I collected some metal supplies from a couple of garages and had to handle a little bit of crowd control. And I'd also like to introduce you to the newest member of the team, David. He will be our known mascot moving forward, so be sure to say hi to David in the comments. Once the darkness has set in, I headed to bed, ready to go again tomorrow. More furniture was demolished on day 64, after staying for the night we dismantled everything we could, then headed back to the van to empty the backpack. Another fenced off house meant lots more carpentry XP, and after getting two thirds of the way around, we'd finally reached level 6. Instead of continuing, I decided to head back to base. I checked the crops to see if the strawberries were now blooming, and if I'm correct in what I've seen, it's one more stage and I should get seeds back. Then we can start our own rear garden farm and have a limited supply of food. For the main reason I return though, to maximise the carpentry XP it's probably a good time to get the 4th carpentry book read. So after I made the mistake of attempting carpentry 3, restarting the game thinking it was bugged, I finally realised and got to work reading. Waking up on day 65 I headed back out to check the strawberry plants and after all this time they were ready. I grabbed my trowel and began to harvest gaining not one but two farming levels in the process, 40 of the finest rosewood strawberries and 120 seeds. That's not what I was expecting, but I will absolutely take it. I put the strawberries in the fridge and then sat on the roof of the garage for the rest of the day to continue on with reading the carpentry book. And by 10pm, it was finished. Tomorrow I head back out on the road in search of our next carpentry point. Man, it feels so good to be this close, but I do wonder why I didn't do this sooner. So, one last carpentry point and the game changes. That will allow us the rain collector barrels, I think we get the staircase and we can get access to the double door. There's probably a load more stuff you're thinking of, but for me, these three items will be incredible. Back to dismantling everything I see today, starting with the fence we left two days ago. I decided to head inside once that was complete and transcribe into my journal, as I really can't remember the last time I did it. I also grabbed myself some new videos to watch back at base when I have some free time, and managed to add another Z to the kill count. There was a little group around here a couple of days back, so I just need to be a little careful getting too confident and keep my eyes peeled. After all, confidence is the biggest killer in this game. I decided to sleep in one of the houses to the back of the fire station so I could do a bit more dismantling before bed and once it was late I got some rest ready for tomorrow. Not much to report on day 57, more of the same, dismantle, dismantle and dismantle more. We have started to move towards the Zeds in the party hats, I'm hoping they're still around in the area so I can finally settle things. I officially jumped out of my chair with this jump scare and after dismantling the majority of this house I headed next door, still without a carpentry level, to get some rest. On day 68 we finished up dismantling the house and headed back to the van to drop off the loot as we were way over the carry capacity. I took the step van down towards the south of the school to check over the final house we missed due to the Zeds in party hats. I handled a bit of crowd control on the school field
then checked over the house but they were long gone. I did find some food though which was much needed due to running out yesterday and I found another 7.88 rifle in the closet with a box of 308 rounds. After heading back to the van to drop off the loot I began the third fencing project and after four hours we'd finally reached level 7 carpentry. It feels so good I mean this unlocks some big moves for us. The fire station can finally be brought back to its roots making the garage usable. I stopped by these two houses on the way back to base as I still hadn't looted them in the 68 days we've been here. The van had attracted a handful of zeds and that's when I spotted me. Where the party hats had gone I'm not sure but I finally killed my former short lived self. I checked over the garage and found some more nails then I attempted to check the house but obviously I was struck by a house alarm and decided to go back to base. I stopped by the logs to drop off the sheet ropes I collected and when we did arrive back at base I emptied my backpack of loot, read some more of the tailoring book and headed to bed ready for day 69. Day 69 and 70 I spent at base making some much needed upgrades. Firstly we put in some new garage doors so we don't have to do numerous trips outside after a loot run. Then pulled in the step van and faced it out the door should we need a quick getaway. I then started work on my farm to the side of the fire station. Being productive and having my own food is going to be key moving forwards. I planted potatoes, radishes and some more strawberries. Then added in two of the rain collector barrels. This should make my life a lot easier once it rains. After getting everything watered and dealing with some random firefighters that turned up back at base. We're headed back to bed to continue tomorrow. Today was the day we finally got some running water to the kitchen. Now I can build stairs it was time to get onto the actual roof and plant some rain collectors. I started by putting in the stairs but because I couldn't put them flush with the building I thought that I needed to add some floor to make it across. Obviously after numerous hours messing around I decided to take a leap of faith and realised there was already a floor in. Before I go any further I checked with the walk to option to see which floor tiles were usable, put them in and also built some wall frames so I knew where to avoid. Once that was done I built two of the rain barrels in what I thought was the right position and plumbed them in. It doesn't look all that pretty, but it's done. On day 71 I decided to go check out the lumber yard. There are three caravans there that may hold some nice loot. We started the day off by killing some zeds in the field out front and as we arrived to the lumber yard we checked around all the caravans but found nothing. Well nothing apart from this horde out front. So I decided to head back to the trees and spent the remainder of the day getting the logs into stacks so they're ready to collect when I need them. I then headed back to base to find more zeds outside which I dispatched and got some rest ready for day 72. Day 72 was all about locking off the road to the south of the fire station. With the double doors I can now lock it off but still have access to it when I want to. We started by hopping the fence and killing a couple of straggling zeds, one of which got a good bite of me but luckily I was let off again with no injury. I grabbed some logs and began to put up the new gate and the walls. We had some visitors along the way but after a fair few attempts we finally got it finished. I decided to grab the van and collect some logs so we could start building the wall along the field side and once the van was full I dropped a run of logs along the front and got to work. Once I started I realised that this wall was a lot longer than I expected it to be, but it will add a nice layer of security to the base once it's complete. On day 73 I decided to head up north towards the prison. I just fancied some bloodshed and I ended up killing a fair few zeds. Around 10pm in game time I had a power coat at home and my recording is now corrupt. I'd managed to get myself a spear and an axe which I'd left in the road but once I got back online they were gone. For some reason it was also 7am in game so I had no idea if it was day 73 or it was day 74. I'll just take it as it's now day 74. I headed back to base as the Moodles were all red and I ended up sleeping till 10pm. I grabbed some sleeping tablets so I could get back off to sleep and get my sleeping back on track ready for day 75. Now we were back up to speed with sleep let's address the elephant in the room. I forgot to mention it a few days back but I've finally had a haircut so I've got no more homeless look. I spent the majority of day 75 out at some houses to the rear of the fire station just dismantling furniture. There was no specific reason behind it, it just felt like the right thing to do. For some reason I became extremely depressed and bored today and I think it would help if you just hit that subscribe button. We had a rather quiet day on day 76. I took the step van to the high street, collected my water dispensers and collected all my loot from the safe houses. We cleared the apartment above Mama Fudgington's and the one above the hairdressers. We also grabbed all the loot that I'd left out on the curb and the last water dispenser. For the rest of the day I put away the food in the cupboards and continued on with putting up some walls at the front of the base and then I went and watered the crops once again. On day 77 we finally decided to head over to the small fenced off area to the north of Rosewood. I I grabbed the step van and headed over to the car park behind the bank. As I arrived I realised it was still as busy as last time I came this way. 
The rain didn't help with visibility, but I gave it my best shot, just luring them off in small groups, working my way into the compound. This was probably the most Zeds I'd killed off in a day. There were just clumps of them all over, and after numerous hours of fighting, it was pretty much clear. I was soaked, and with the indicator of potential cold appearing, I jumped into one of the houses, dropped my wet clothes, and had a good look around. I managed to find myself some new clothes, even found a nice supply of food in the kitchen. I pried open the garage to check for any loot, but there isn't much that was of interest. I headed back to bed, ready to check out the rest of the properties tomorrow. I was awake at 2am on day 78, so I decided to do some more dismantling of furniture till the sun came up. I checked over another two houses on the street, again with not a lot of luck on the loot front, and with a full backpack I decided to head over to the van to do a drop off. In all this time I haven't realised the cold noodles, because I'm always wearing the firefighter gear. There was a small group of Zeds approaching from the west, but as I was tired from my early start today, I decided to jump in the van and head back to base. I emptied the loot from the van onto the floor, put up a couple more walls out front, then headed to bed as I was exhausted. On day 79 we headed back to the last two houses of the fenced off compound. We had a little bit of crowd control, but nothing too strenuous, and in the first house we found a small amount of ammo and another sledgehammer in the garage. The second house across the street was completely empty. We did find some metal supplies and some food to take back to base with us, but overall it was a bad day at the office. I decided to take the van up to the mechanic shop next. There was a large group to deal with, but using the standard tactic we took them down with ease, then headed round back to the rear door. We dispatched the four zombies inside and began to loot up. Not a lot of loot really. Lots of bits for mechanics, but it's still something I haven't dipped my toes into yet. As we were out this way, I swung by the gas station. With no Zeds in sight, I managed to get in and loot up as much as possible. I got stacks and stacks of food, but once my backpack was full and it was getting late, I headed back to the van and headed home. Once back at base, we did the usual food drop-off upstairs and added another water dispenser to the hall. Then headed back to bed, ready to go on day 80. On day 80, I forgot to hit record. What a shock, but all we did was head over to the lumber mill, expect a lot of logs and getting next to none. We collected some more of the logs from the cutting spot, ended up getting scratched from a zombie and headed to bed ready to go again on day 81. So on days 81 through to 84 we spent all of our time upgrading the base building the last walls to really make this place a fortress. And on day 85 late into the evening we finally hit the last nail and the job was done. So now everything's complete, let's give you a quick tour of the Rosewood Fire Station. First we'll start off at the roof and as you can see the floor is now a safe place to walk on. You can't really see much but the front car park is now safe and secure from any Zeds passing through. Now we're downstairs it's a little bit more visible to see. We've added a gate onto each side for access, we've cleared all the rubbish so it looks neat and tidy and we have a couple of doors at the front so we can gain access to the field. I finally gave Davies spot outside the front door, put my flamingos next to each gate for some inspiration when I'm leaving and dropped one off on the roof although for some reason his head's missing. The last thing that's bothering me is the two cars to the south side. They're a bit of a nightmare when I'm leaving that way so I want to be able to hotwire and get them moved. I grabbed all the gear I needed to start doing some mechanics and I spent the rest of the day just playing around with the car in the garage. It's not a skill I've touched yet but I managed to get to level one then I decided to sort out my red moodles and head to bed ready to continue tomorrow. I spent all day on day 87 just continuing on with the mechanic skill, playing around with the car in the garage, and also played around with the two cars that I'm trying to get moved. And on day 88, once we'd hit level 2 mechanics, we finally headed over to the cars with our gas cans to fuel them both up, used our newfound mechanic skills to hotwire them, and moved them outside the compound. My OCD has now been cleansed, and after harvesting our strawberries, we headed off to bed ready for day 89. On day 89 it was time to run our final few errands. After visiting the gas station a little while ago and finding it clear, I wanted to head back to stock up on fuel so I had access to both of the gas stations moving forward. I grabbed some food for the road, transcribed my journal one last time and headed out in the trusty fire truck. I aimed to stop for every zombie I saw. I know the Zeds are likely to be pulled to my location now, but I wanted the main part of Rosewood to be clear and this is the way to do it. I know there's a generator somewhere around these garages so after dispatching a few more Zeds that were just hanging around, we grabbed a generator from a garage and set off to the gas station. We took the long route around the fenced off community and just as we hit the main road, there was a gunshot out to the east. I stopped off to kill another two Zeds that were still in the road 
and once I hit the gas station, a handful of them were making their way over to the shop. I managed to grab a duffel bag from one which I'll put in the seat of this car for the extra room moving forwards and cleared everybody that walked past. Once it was clear, I set up the generator and got to work filling my 13 gas cans that I'd brought along. It took some time, but by 8.30 the cans were full, my car was full and so was the generator. I headed back into the shop to loot up all the food I couldn't carry last time and as it was getting late, I headed upstairs to get some sleep ready for day 90. I was out at the gas station at 5am and I grabbed one of the ice fridges to take back to base for the additional storage. I checked over all the vehicles for any useful items, killed off a couple of Zeds by the main road and headed over to Pizza World. I cleared a few remaining Zeds, again looted anything of use and headed over to Spiffo's. I nearly got caught by a Zed in the toilet, I knew she was there but I just couldn't swing with the darkness. I headed up north for a few more kills caught a couple more behind the motel and then I headed over towards bail bonds. I wasn't expecting as many as there were to be sat in one small building. I played it safe and kept my distance and managed to clear them all. At this point the car was full so I headed back to base to drop off some more loot and then I headed out towards the south near the house with the gardening plots. This is the only area I haven't really travelled to since I started out. I met a group of three as I arrived at the first house, managed to loot up then headed across the garden to the next house. There were a few zeds in the trees to the west but there was a large group hovering around in the front garden. I used my stealthy tactics to kill them off, small groups, swinging with a trusty crowbar, but then I got drowsy and the kills began to slow. I managed to check over the house, get myself a couple more kills, but more began to come from the tree line, so I jumped back in the car and headed home. I built a couple more rain collectors on the roof as the bin bags were bothering me in the garage, and then I headed back to bed, ready for day 91. On day 91 the goal was to finish off where I left yesterday. This area of Rosewood is the only area I haven't really travelled to yet and once these last few houses are clear that should be Rosewood pretty much clear. I will have looted every house anyway so I grabbed the fire truck and headed back out to the south. My first stop on the way would be the walled off house with the farming plots. I alerted a few Zeds that were hanging around outside so I took them down first and as there were clearly some Zeds inside I decided to go around the back and check the garden shed. Apart from the usual metal supply there wasn't much to grab. I then headed in the house through the bedroom window, took down the two Zeds inside and got to work looting. I am at a point where there isn't a lot I'm looking for apart from ammo and food and luckily this house had both. The next house had a small group lurking around the front yard so they were next on the hit list. I'm growing in confidence with killing larger groups now which is great but uh, I don't want to get too complacent and end up getting myself killed. Next we headed down the dirt path towards the two houses in the southwest corner. There were a few Zeds down here but very spread out and in the first house we bumped into what looked like Jason from the horror movie. We obviously took the mask and another machete for the collection, grabbed any food that was there, found some more shotgun shells and then headed to the second house. Again, a fair few Zeds lurking around and a couple inside but it was easy pickings for another bag full of goodies. As we headed back to the car to drop off the loot, there was just one house left to clear and pretty much everywhere in Rosewood has been cleared. We emptied the bag and headed next door, as usual grabbed the food and some first aid supplies, then it was back to the truck. For me, Rosewood is clear, to an extent. There are obviously a few lurking around here in there but every house has now been cleared and it took me 91 days to do it. As I head back to base I think if I started again today and with what I know it would probably be a lot quicker but so far it's been great. I mean I've learned so freaking much from you all watching along and the support so far has been amazing. Anyway the kill count is now up to 744 that's nearly 350 Zeds we've killed this episode which is great for me but before I go I've got three more things for you. Number one is to subscribe if you aren't already. I've got some big plan for a thousand subscribers and when I say it's big it's not huge but it'll be fun for you all to watch. Number two is that we're, we're not done here yet. I've got so much more planned and it's just hard doing everything you want to do when you have a full-time job and a family. Just stick with me please. And number three the biggest of them all yet. You remember the Zeds with the party arts that killed me after the first death then nearly killed me again. I got them. And on that positive note I'm gonna go get started on episode seven. Thanks for watching. I'm JPGZ. 